All right, my friends, let's talk about male loneliness in your 30s because this is something that I know I have experienced. A lot of men that I am friends with have experienced and admitted after getting to know them. And I think if you look online, it's definitely something that we see a lot of. Unfortunately, I think a lot of the content that's out there, whether it's written or video format or podcasts, it tends to be very negative. It tends to be very much about how everything's going to hell and all men are depressed and they're never going to make it and the, the, you know, the world's going to hell in a handbasket and there's nothing we can do. And I, I do not feel that that's the case. I think there are many things that we can actually do as men in our 30s and 40s and beyond to reverse this trend. And I personally feel like I am one of those men who is trying my best to do that. And I've had many compliments in my personal life from men who have said, wow, you, you're you different, man. You make an effort. You actually have a lot of friends. You've grown a good social network. And it's because of the way I frame it and I think about it and because I don't give in to the trends that are happening. So I do want to talk from a perspective of why I think this is happening from my own experience and also a lot of reading I've done. I'm going to cite a couple of sources online here to try and make it as factual as we can. But again, I want this to be a positive discussion because I think sometimes there can be a risk of just dwelling in the negativity or feeling like there's no hope. So with that in mind, let's kick things off. I've got a couple of little ideas here that I'm going to share. I'm going to talk through and uh, would love your feedback on. So why are men so lonely? And in particular, why are men in their 30s and beyond so lonely these days? What causes it? And what can we do about it? It's a big question. And I don't espouse to have every single perfect answer, but I have figured things out for myself pretty well. And I feel like I'm in a place where I have a good social life. I have a lot of good friends and I'm able to make new friends and grow my community um, because of the way I think about it. And hopefully this will be of benefit to you. But I think to really solve this for yourself, if you are a man in your 30s and 40s who is feeling isolated or alone or like you have less friends than you used to, to be able to solve this problem for yourself or to begin to change the way you are, you need to understand what it is and what causes it. And we can go into the depths of male psychology and genetics and all those, you know, sociological reasons and things like that. And maybe we will in a future episode. But for today, I want it to be general and surface level and try to give some perspective. So these are just some statistics that I found when I was looking online. I was just trying to back up what I was thinking and what I'd been hearing from other men. And this was a survey that was taken in 2021. This was the latest survey that I could find with reasonable statistics. And it just gives you a feeling for the difference in the way male friendships have declined over the last 30 years, which is pretty crazy to think about. So way back in 1990, the survey shows that men, typically less than 3% of them had no close friends and 40% had six to nine good friends. But if you go to 2021, which is only 31 years later, 15% of men have no close friends and only 15% have six to nine good, good close friends, male friends. And that's pretty terrifying and pretty confronting in a lot of ways. If you look at the statistics for women, it's similar though. And that shows you that it's not just men who are suffering here. And I want to highlight that as well, that it's not just men who are going through this. It's a societal thing. It's a whole worldwide thing. I think it has a lot to do with a lot of factors, which we're going to talk about. But generally speaking, you can see the disparity there is greater for men and the change is greater. And that's important to recognize. It doesn't mean that, you know, there's nothing we can do. It just means that we actually, you know, have to confront what's happening here. So that was a kind of a confronting thing to think about and uh, something that we need to realize. In that article too, there was a little paragraph here that I wanted to highlight that said, young men are faring worse than most. More than one in four, which is 28% of men under the age of 30, reported having no close social connections. And they found that 18% of the public had no more than one person outside their immediate household they could turn to for help. So this is interesting, right, in that I think a lot of men, we tend to look internally for solutions or we look to the internet, which I'm going to talk about in a minute, before we talk to our friends, before we talk to family. And generally speaking, as a world, that's happening more and more overall. So the trend is going more like that. And as men, we tend to do it a lot of the time where we don't have close social connections that we can lean on. So what are some of the causes? And I've kind of, I tried to break it down here into external 
causes and internal causes. So we'll start with the external. And this isn't to lay blame. This is just to talk about reality of what I've seen, what I've experienced, and I'm sure you have as well. So the thing is, I've noticed is that people live less in groups and in communities than we used to. Now, we still live in close proximity to each other, right? I live in a a place in here in um, California, in Long Beach, where there's a lot of people around me, but a lot of them don't know each other. We don't know our neighbors. We're not part of our communities. So even though we live in proximity to each other, we don't live in a communal way. We live less in groups. So it used to be that generations would live in the same household or in the same street and would spend a lot of time together. Families who were neighbors would grow up together, uncles and aunties, and everyone would be in the same kind of local areas. That's changing a lot. People move a lot more, like I did, moving from one country to another, and there's a lot more of that happening. So there's less living in groups just as a society. And it's a reality of what's happening. We're tending to live more in an isolated way with less kind of familial or community ties than we used to have. The next thing is that we tend to seek online solutions to problems first. Now, I'm sure you do this. I do this a lot where if I have a problem, I don't go and ask a friend for advice or a family member or even my wife. I go to the internet. And I try and figure it out, right? Because there's so much information, a lot of it crap. But we go to the internet first and we try to seek solutions that way. It never used to be like that. It used to be that we would tend to look to family and friends for support and advice. And in the verbalizing of our problems, in the sharing of them, we would actually bond. So that's one of the things that's missing. Socializing too tends to play, take place online primarily or initially, right? So if you notice a lot of the time now, rather than call up a friend on the phone or just go and knock on their door and say, hello, you're going to send them a DM on Instagram or message them on Facebook or like one of their posts or comment or something like that. That's how you're actually connecting with people primarily or initially with most of the time now, instead of actually doing it directly. And then the last one I think it's important to acknowledge is that the media tends to create this view of the world, which is one that it's very dangerous, that it's very isolating, that you can't trust anyone. And that serves their purposes. I'm not going to get into that whole thing today, but, you know, basically danger and tragedy sells. It's just the way it is. And so for the media, that's what they want to kind of lean into. I've read before that there's 13 negative news stories to every one positive news story. And that I think you can kind of agree with that. A lot of the time, negativity tends to sell. And so we sometimes buy into the idea that the world is a dangerous place and that we shouldn't connect with people because we'll get hurt or we'll get damaged or something like that. So these are definitely external causes that I've seen, and I'm sure you can as well. I see a couple of people there in the chat agreeing for sure. And I'm not saying, again, these, these aren't doomsday things. It's not like they can't be reversed, but we need to acknowledge that they're there. Let's flip the script a little bit and look at the internal causes. All right, so what I've noticed for myself and for a lot of people is that there's these things that we tend to think and we tend to behave in certain ways which are caused from the inside out. So one of the things that I've noticed is that we have less socialization or communication skills. And I want to ask you, think about it. How many people do you personally know who are excellent communicators? who are actually very good at talking with other people, meeting people, connecting, building community with people. It's pretty rare, isn't it? And I would say maybe one in 50 people are like that. And usually it's because they're just that kind of personality or it's something that they've had to develop like I have as a professional speaker. I've learned to become more like that. Kind of gave myself a backhanded compliment, but you get the idea. I've actually did, I've developed and nurtured that skill as a communicator, but it wasn't something that came naturally. And most of us haven't developed that to the extent that we would have in the past. We haven't had to pick up the phone and ask for a date. We haven't had to go and knock on a door and ask for a job. We haven't had to travel to new cities on our own and meet people, right? We're just doing a lot of things online and a lot of things are pre-done for us, which limits the amount of so socialization and communication skills that we have. The next thing I think is that we look at ourselves as unique. Now, everyone is unique, of course. I agree that we tend to, you know, we tend to look at ourselves as a unique person, but I think we go too far with this where we tend to think, well, I'm the only one with this problem, right? Nobody else is feeling lonely or isolated. It's only me. Everyone else is having a great life and is having fun. I'm the one who's the loser or suffering here. No one else is like that. So we look at ourselves and our problems as unique instead of realizing they're pretty common. The third one is we're not really sure how to build friendships. So there's a lot of material out there about how to be better at dating, how to be attractive, how to meet the person who you're supposed to fall in love with, you know, how to sleep with someone. As men, there's a lot of information, and I'm sure you've read it all, same as I have over the years, but how much information is there about actually how to build friendships, especially male-to-male -male friendships? 
not a lot. And so for that reason, we don't really understand how to do it. And we don't tend to actually practice that skill and develop that strength or build that muscle right over time. So that's another big one. We're not actually sure how to do it. So we don't do it. And then I think the last one, which if we're honest with ourselves, is very often we try less than once and then we give up. And I've seen this a lot in my friendships with people where especially if I kind of make an effort with someone and I don't get an immediate response or they're too busy to meet up or something, I just kind of, I, I palm them off. I go, oh, whatever. I'm not going to make an effort with that person. The truth is people do make mistakes. They get busy. Sometimes they don't know how to communicate back and they don't, they feel uncomfortable or whatever. They're not used to people reaching out. So they kind of, they are a little bit standoffish and we can tend to think, well, that just means they don't like me. And the truth is that sometimes we have to try more than once. We have to be what I'm going to talk about later. We have to be proactive with this, right? And so when we try less than once or we try once and we give up, that tends to create this vicious cycle a lot of the time. So those are the internal causes. And I think if we're honest with ourselves, there's things we can work on and there's things that we can catch ourselves in the act of doing. I know I can. The next thing I want to really cover here for men is why are men so lonely at the age of 30? I think it's because there's actually life changes that just happen at the age of 30. And these are, again, things that we need to confront, we need to admit and realize they're there. And so really, if we look at it, number one, people go out and they socialize less, right? In your teens, in your 20s, you want to be out of the house, you want to be exploring, adventuring, traveling, doing fun things, going out all night, partying, right? We've all been through that phase or at least wanted to do it. And we tend to go out and socialize more. By the age of 30 and especially 35 and 40, we're doing that less and less. Why? Because we're more focused on our careers. We have more financial pressure. We, some of us have partners and families. And the other reason I think is that we tend to want less uncertainty in our lives. So what I've noticed in myself, as I become more settled, I've met the right person and I've got a good career and I've bought a home and all those kind of things is I'm not craving that uncertainty like I was when I was young, that variety and that excitement in life as much. And so therefore it's easier to slip into habit and routine and get stuck. And so I think this is the other thing to realize is that yes, there are these changes at 30 and we do tend to, we change as people, all our friends and family change as people. And it's not a bad thing. It's just life. It's just how we are. And we have to accept that and realize that that's part of how we're going to live. So these are changes that we all deal with, men and women. But for men, I think sometimes they're a little bit slower on the uptake in terms of realizing these changes are happening. And especially if a lot of their friends start to settle down, get more career or family focused, they go, oh, what's changed, man? Why doesn't anyone want to go out anymore? It's not fair. And so they tend to resist this idea that life changes at 30 and 35 and beyond. So just realize this is happening. Doesn't mean you have to do any of these things, but realize it's a reality. And I think it will help. All right, let's change gears a little bit and talk about the cycle of loneliness. This is one that I have been in many times. And I think really all of us go through this, whether we can articulate it or not, it is a bit of a cycle. And I would say it typically starts when we start to feel lonely or when we isolate ourselves. So there's really no beginning to this, but it starts to slip into our lives. Now, I know for myself, especially during the lockdown years of 2020 and 2021, I felt a lot of this. Even though I'm a typically social person, I like being out and about, I started to feel this cycle of loneliness and I started to fall into this trap. So maybe you've noticed this in yourself too. So first of all, we feel lonely, right? We feel this feeling of, man, I wish I had more friends or I was out doing something. I was out in the world connecting with people. I wish I could have more genuine conversations. And because we feel that loneliness, what we then tip into is shame. We actually feel ashamed of the fact that we're lonely. So we have loneliness, but then we also have shame around feeling lonely, which is a double emotion. And a lot of the time we don't realize that we're actually feeling both at once, especially as men, we're not very good at identifying emotions. And so we start to fall into this trap of thinking, well, I'm lonely, but I also feel a sense of shame about being lonely. Then once we feel that sense of shame, what we tend to do is we hide those feelings, right? We hide them down deep. We bury them. We don't talk about them with anyone, especially not our guy friends, maybe not even our partner or our our colleagues or anyone else in the world, we hide those feelings of loneliness and shame down. And what that does, it kind of creates like a time bomb where we're kind of suppressing everything inside and we can't really express ourselves comfortably. 
And then because we're feeling so uncomfortable, we're feeling lonely and ashamed and we're suppressing all this down, that disables us from being able to communicate well with other people. And when you do see people and they say, how are you? You're like, I'm fine. Everything's good. When you're not, you're actually lonely and ashamed and you're suppressing it all. And so what you tend to do because you feel so uncomfortable around the other people because of all these emotions swirling inside of you is you isolate more. You isolate yourself and you resist spending time with them. I know I've had times where I've been really down or feeling really lonely. People have invited me out to do something. And because I was feeling like crap, I just didn't want to go. And I thought, I don't want to be there. I don't want to talk about how I'm feeling and what I'm doing in my life. I just want to kind of hide from the world. And so I did. And what do you think isolating yourself tends to do? It creates more loneliness. So you can see this cycle goes round and around and around. And because as men, we can't articulate what we're actually feeling, it gets worse and worse over time. And then we get into bad behaviors, whether it is being online too much or drinking or drugs or pornography or whatever it is that we tend to find suppresses and keeps those emotions buried. We ignore them. Video games are another one. We can find that we can get away with the, ignoring this cycle for a while, but eventually it just basically ruins our emotions. And so if you can catch yourself in the act of either feeling lonely or feeling ashamed or hiding your feelings, those are the triggers of when you can say, okay, I'm feeling this. I need to express it first of all to myself and then to someone else, another person, and let them know what I'm feeling. And you'll be amazed how much empathy you'll get, and you might be surprised that they're feeling the same thing. Along with the cycle of loneliness, I think are some false beliefs that start to creep in. And these are some of the beliefs that I have had. And I'm talking to some of my male friends, especially after the age of 30 and 40 and even 50. These are the things that they've felt. So maybe you felt these too, right? Other people are more social than me. They have this amazing life and I'm, I'm not like them. Or the other one is I should have more friends. Why am I such a loner? Why don't I have a bunch of friends who I hang out with? Or I used to have a bunch of friends. I should you know, have friends like I used to. Um, I'm boring. Right? This is a big one. A lot of men feel like they're not interesting. They're not exciting. They're a boring person. They don't have this fun life, You know, especially when you compare yourself online to people who are living these kind of fake lives. You can look at it or you're looking at people's Instagram highlight reels of their life. You can think, well, I suck. I'm boring. And so why would anyone want to hang out with me? Right. The other one that I alluded to before is that we complain that people don't want to do anything anymore because they've changed. Well, everyone's settled down now. Everyone else is boring. They don't want to do anything. All my friends just want to stay home with their wives or their kids or they don't want to go out anymore. Right. It might be true, but it doesn't mean you can't meet new people and find new interests. And then the last one is things aren't like they used to be. And this, I think, goes two ways. It can go, things aren't like they used to be in my life when I was in my teens or my 20s. And also just as a society, you know, things aren't the way they used to be 50, 100 years ago when people were more connected. Both these things are a reality. But I think if we lean into them and we make them our beliefs, they tend to actually limit us in a lot of ways. So all these false beliefs, I'm not saying they don't have some element of reality, but if we lean into them and we make them part of our identity, what happens is that they stop us from actually making any effort to grow and to develop as people. So let's switch gears a little bit. We've talked about all the causes and the reasons, I believe, and there's probably a hell of a lot more than that, but let's switch gears and talk about what we can actually do to start to change this cycle and to change this routine that we fall into as men in our 30s when we feel lonely. So first of all, I think the most important thing is to realize that others want friendship too. Okay, really key point. A lot of people out there are looking for the same thing as you. A lot of people are feeling isolated and lonely and are craving human connection and to talk openly and honestly just like you are. And so if you realize that, it actually makes you more open to doing it, to being the person who is going to put yourself out there first. The other thing that's important, especially for men, is to realize that typically men rally around activities. That's why men, I think, like playing online games. They like sports. They like going to the bar and watching something together, right? They like traveling, all those kind of things, because it's actually rallying around an activity. 
So if you can find activities that you can do with your guy friends or you can join activities that other men are doing, you'll probably find you have a better time initially and you'll get to know people and bond versus just trying to sit there and talk about your feelings with them. Sometimes if you go too directly at another man and say, I'm feeling this, it'll freak them out. And I go, well, dude, I can't talk about this because they have no emotional um, understanding either. So they get very stuck there. Eventually you might be able to, but in the beginning, realize that men tend to rally around activities. That's most important. The next one that I've learned is that you can be the organizer, okay? And you can see yourself as the kind of cornerstone of your social group. A lot of men wait and they get very passive and they tend to think that other men should be the organizers or they let women in their lives do all the organizing. Generally speaking, women are much better at organizing and planning and connecting. Men are pretty damn useless at this. And especially as we get older, we tend to give in to whatever our wives and our partners and, and other women in our lives want us to do because we're not being the organizer anymore. Now, I don't mean this in a chauvinistic way. Women are amazing at doing these things, but it's important for men to actually organize and plan events and activities themselves. And you can be that organizer and you can invite people. The worst is they'll say no, but at least you are the person who's putting yourself out there. The next one I think is important is to see yourself as learning to socialize. As I said earlier, sometimes we just haven't developed the skills of socialization or communication very well because we haven't had to use them. So see yourself as actually learning them. See yourself as someone who's developing them. And you'll find that when you do that, it gives you a little bit of a break in your own kind of judgment of yourself because you're not thinking, oh, I have to be good at this. I have to make friends immediately. You can just say, no, I'm learning to be friendlier. I'm learning to connect. Okay. That really helps if you just see yourself as learning. And then the last point that I would bring up here is to enjoy the process instead of just the result. Very often men tend to be externally validated. I've talked about this in other videos. And so we fall into this trap of thinking, well, I don't have any friends yet. I'm not going out this weekend. So I'm hopeless at this. I'm going to give up. Just look at the process and realize that you're building connections one at a time. And over time, you will find that it actually starts to make a big difference. But enjoy that process. Enjoy the journey of actually becoming more social, of connecting with people. And not every relationship has to be the world's greatest friendship. You can just have little connections with people and enjoy the process as you go. All right. So these are some things we can do that I think will make a big effort, make a big difference if we make the effort. And on that point, I wanted to bring up something from the forum, Ask Men Over 30 on Reddit. I was looking over at that, that um, subreddit today as I was starting to research for this, this um, live today. And one of the things that I saw was this. And this was a comment. And I thought it was very true. Friendships take work. Some people don't realize that friendships take work. It's common wisdom that romantic relationships take work from both parties, but friendships are the same. Any friend group that stays together for long periods always has at least one person that's actively working to keep it together, keeping the text strings going, planning things, inviting people to things. If you don't have a friend like that, you need to be the friend like that. And if you aren't that person, recognize the work it takes for the one who is. It's hard to always be the one doing the inviting when no one reciprocates or plan things, plans things. So keep that in mind, my friend. If you are looking to build more friendships, you have to make the effort. You have to be the one who is proactive, who is actually putting the effort in and, and doing the work to build the connections with people. Doesn't mean sometimes people will be lazy and you'll feel like, man, I'm always the one organizing. Yeah, it will. But you know what? You'll also be the one with a great social life. Most of the men I know, including myself, who have a good social circle, they are the connectors. They're the ones who are actually doing something to be proactive, to build connections. And like it says there, keeping the text threads going, organizing and planning things, inviting people. You need to do that too if you want to grow as a man and you want to have a good social circle and you want to overcome that loneliness. The last point I have, and this is something I talked about in a video, I want to say three years ago now, is this idea of being generative. So I know we've, today there's a big term generative AI. It has nothing to do with that. The word generative means to actually be someone who is creating, who is doing things in the world that is, that is impacting, right? That's what it means. And so what I would say, other ways to explain it, I put here are to be interested, to be engaged, to be excited, to be a kind person and to be fun. Those kind of those uh, attitudes or those ways of framing the world I have found make a big difference if you're willing to be open and to be generative as a person. 
And so I would challenge you, if you are feeling lonely as a man in your 30s, to think about, am I being a generative person? Am I actually giving off this vibe of being interested and engaged and excited and a kind person and fun? Or am I just sitting back expecting the world to give it to me? And I think you know the answer for yourself. And hopefully what I've shared here today will help as well.